When you assess the neck, the first thing you are going to inspect the trachea, the position, whether it's midline or deviated. Normally, we expect the midline trachea. Then you are going to check the jugular vein distension. When you assess jugular vein distension, you keep the patient in a flat position and you check for the jugular vein. You can see the jugular vein when the patient is in a flat position. Then you elevate the head of the band up to 45 degree angle. Normally, it disappears. But if you still see that jugular vein distended, that indicates that there is some plague or some problem. Overload backflow to the jugular vein that is indicating jugular vein distension that is abnormal. Then you are going to palpate the carotid artery. Always make sure that you palpate one side at a time. If you palpate both sides together, that can completely block the circulation to brain. So you expect between 0 and plus 3. 0 means absence of pulse. Plus 3, bounding pulse. We expect plus 2, that is the normal pulse. Next thing, you are going to auscultate carotid artery. Usually you use the bell of the stethoscope and you are checking the buoy with the bell of the stethoscope. A swishing sound indicates turbulent blood flow that is abnormal, can be due to some plague or any narrowing of the artery, constricted artery. These things can cause turbulent blood flow and abnormal sound on auscultation and failure of carotid pulse. Okay, let me check your carotid ruy. Okay, I want to use the bell. Very good. No broy. Let me see. Can you turn back? All right, the trachea is in the midline. Okay, just swallow. All right, thyroid gland, there is no enlargement. Physical examination of the thorax includes inspection and physical examination of the thorax. The first thing, inspect the chest rise and fall. Then you look at the anterior chest and posterior chest for any lesion, edema, moles. Also, you can check the anterior posterior diameter that is called AP diameter. Then you can auscultate. Normally, we use the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Normally, there are three lung sounds, bronchial, bronchovesicular, and vesicular sound. We keep the stethoscope diaphragm in different places in the chest to listen to the lung sounds. When I ask you to take nice deep breath, please do it for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, first landmark over the trachea. That's bronchial sound. Very good. Second, above the clavicle. On the right side, number three. Second intercostal space. Down. Then parallel. Here, second intercostal space. Then down. Fourth intercostal space. Then opposite side. Fourth intercostal space. Then down. Sixth intercostal space. Then going to the other side. Then down. Mid axillary line. Then opposite side. Mid axillary line. Now we are going to listen the posterior chest. One, two, second intercostal space, opposite side, second intercostal space, fourth intercostal space, down, opposite side, fourth intercostal space, then down, sixth intercostal space, opposite side, sixth intercostal space. Then down, mid axillary line, opposite mid axillary line. Next, we are going to talk about the assessment of the heart. 
Heart has four chambers. From the right ventricle, pulmonary artery starts. From the left ventricle, iota starts. The starting point of the iota has a semilunar wall, which is known as iotic valve. The same way in pulmonary artery, there is a valve at the starting point that is pulmonic valve. The closure of the valve makes a sound which is S2 and the closure of the atrioventricular valve. The aorta and ventricle separated with valve known as on the right side is tricuspid and the left side is mitral valve and the opening and closure of this valve makes a sound that is S1. S1 is the first heart sound and S2 is the second sound. When you listen to the heart sound with the bell of the stethoscope, you can always listen lap, dap, lap, dap. Lap is S1, dap is S2. Lap is formed by the closure of the atrioventricular valve. S2 by the closure of semilunar valve, aortic and pulmonic valve. Now let's see the landmarks for the auscultation. This is the mnemonic which is used for easiest memory. All pigs eat too much. Iotic, pulmonic, herbs point, tricuspid and mitral. You're going to check the first landmark. Second intercostal space right to the sternal border. That is your iotic. The blood pumps from the bottom from the ventricle to this direction. So here the iota moving to this direction and pulmonic, the pulmonary artery push the blood in this direction. So that's why when you uh, check the aortic sound, you're going to check on the right side. Aortic, pulmonic on the opposite side. So you're going to check the pulmonic on the left side, second in the coastal space to the sternal border. The third one is herbs point, herb at third intercostal space where the S1, S2 sounds are the same because all the valves almost closer to that area. That's why all those sounds are equal. In the aortic and pulmonic, always S2, that is dub is louder. The fourth one is tricuspid, which, which is the fourth intercostal space left to the sternal border and here the lap is louder and the fifth is mitral the fifth intercostal space mid clavicular line that is mitral and point of maximum impulse you always get there always you check the pulse epical pulse for one complete minute now the heart sounds, we're going to locate the renal notch down, manubrium here, second in the coastal space, aortic on the right, left second in the coastal space close to the sternal border that is pulmonic, third in the coastal space on the left sternal border that is herbs point, fourth in the coastal space that is tricuspid and fifth intercostal space and the mid clavicular line here is going to be the PMI point of maximum impulse epical pulse you use your stopwatch count for one minute abdominal examination you proceed with this three steps look listen and feel starting by inspection auscultation then palpation when you inspect what are the things you are looking you're looking for any abnormal lesions discoloration of skin abdominal distension any type of lumps and abnormal pulsation that indicates abdominal aortic aneurysm next you are going to ask the patient about bowel habits then you are going to palpate the first thing you are going to palpate abdominal iota. Where do you feel the abdominal iota? 
you're going to palpate, you're going to locate the C4 process. C4 process is the um, lowest portion of the uh, sternum. C4 process is the lowest portion of the sternum. And you're going to look at the umbilicus, and that's a straight line. The abdominal iota is going to be located just uh, slightly towards the right side. So where you feel the pulse, that is going to be abdominal iota. If any bonding pulse there, that indicates the abdominal iotic aneurysm. That is abnormal. That's very dangerous. And you're going to assess the bowel sound. You're going to auscultate the bowel sound with your stethoscope. You're going to use diaphragm for auscultating bowel sounds. You're going to use the band for auscultating abdominal iota. Normally, you start the abdominal bowel sounds uh, auscultation from the right lower quadrant because there is idiosecal valve is there. Uh, there is maximum intensity of bowel sound. That's why we are going to start from the lower right quadrant. Then we are proceeding in a clockwise direction, right lower, then right upper quadrant, then left upper quadrant, then left lower quadrant. So this is the normal way of auscultating bowel sound. Normally there are bowel sound between 5 to 35 for a minute. Normally we check one minute and if you don't listen you can stay up to five minutes. And hypoactive sound means bowel sound less than 5. Hyperactive means bowel sound more than 35. In constipation, you can see hypoactive less than 5. In diarrhea, normally you see hyperactive bowel sounds greater than 35. Abdominal examination, look, listen and feel. So inspect. Alright, John, let me look at your belly. Oh, look, very good. Do you have any abdominal pain? No. No? Okay. So let me listen to your abdomen. Okay. Um, here you know the C4 process. Here the uh, umbilicus. On the right side, here you are going to listen the abdominal iota with the bell. Auscultate from right lower quadrant for one minute. Then right upper quadrant, then left upper quadrant, then left lower quadrant. Followed by abdominal examination, for female patient you can ask about the menstrual cycle, the last menstruation day. Also you can check is there any vaginal discharges, is there any abnormalities with the labia majora, minora, you can check the perineal parts any sign of infection, any discharge and also you can ask the patient about breast self-examination. If the patient does not know how to do it, you have to teach them. Male patients, you can check the testicle, is there any abnormal enlargement, any inflammation, any swelling and also you can check for any discharge from penis and ask about the patient's testicular examination. Upper extremity and lower extremity, you're going to check. The first thing you're going to inspect the color of the skin, any lump, lesion, any wound, any cut, any type of scars, any abnormal structure, abnormalities, all these things you're going to check. Then you're going to feel the pulse. Up, upper extremity, you're going to feel the radial pulse, the brachial pulse. For the lower extremity, you're going to check the femoral pulse, popliteal pulse, posterior tibial and dorsalis pedis. So upper extremity, you're going to check the capillary refill. If it is greater than two seconds, that is abnormal. Normally we expect less than two to three seconds. You check the radial pulse for its quality, strength and rate for one minute. Then you're going to check circulation, motion and sensation. You're going to touch the patient's extremity with a sharp toothpick or a q-tip you can touch the different locations in both arms and compare each other pulse also you compare bilateral extremity then you're going to check the lower extremity the same way you're going to check the capillary refill 
on the toe and circulation, motion and sensation, lower extremity, you check the pulse, motion you ask the patient to wiggle the toe, sensation you are going to touch with a sharp or a dull object and ask the patient uh, are you feeling which side right or left you are comparing both legs. Range of motion, adduction, abduction, flexion, extension, supination and pronation. Okay, let me check your nail. Capillary refill less than two seconds. Very good. Okay, John, just do um, hold your hands, please. Extend. Adduct. Abduct. Very good. Can you do like this? Very good. All right, just press against my hand. Other hand. Excuse my hand. Excuse my hand. This hand. Excuse my hand. Okay, close your hand, close your eyes and let me know when I touch you. Can you feel which which hand I'm touching in this room? Close your close your eyes. Okay. What about now? Where now? Left forearm here. Uh, right forearm. Okay. Now let me feel your pulse. I'm going to check the radial pulse. And those and those all right, let me check your radial pulse. Very good, it's normal. Let me check your brachial pulse. Very good, normal. Let me check your femoral pulse. Let me check your popliteal. Let me check posterior tibia and dorsalis pedis. Okay, can you press against my hand? Very good. Can you bend your knee? Bend your knee. Okay. Extend. Keep closer. Great. Close okay. your eyes and tell me where am I touching? Left leg. Right leg. Left leg above the knee. Uh, right above the knee. Okay, John. Can you please walk on those straight line? Very good. When you assess the back, you always turn the patient to the side and assess the skin for skin integrity. Is there any wound, any cut, any scar, any bruise, any lesion, any discoloration, any petechiae, any reddish patches, any sign of infection, any fungal infection. It's very important always you check the bony prominences. You check sacrum, back of the heel, back of the head and ear for pressure ulcer. Assess anus for lesions, hemorrhoids and bleeding. Before I go, do you want me to do anything for you? Here's your call bell. Okay, so I lower your bed, you'll be fine. You want me to do anything else for you? Uh, can you grab my cell phone? Okay, you have cell phone? Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, also, can I get some ice cream? Definitely. All right. Okay, here's your cell phone. And I will let the dietary department know that you are asking for an ice cream. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. Take care. That concludes the physical examination. Hope you enjoyed. Please subscribe for more nursing skill videos. Thank you so much for watching.